And uh, Dr. Bill Dingle here for the Nutra Medical Report. And, of course, always bumping up a few notches. We have the amazing Greg Jackson, co-author with Steve Dace. And, uh, Greg, uh, your book is quite important. I consider it a uh, political prophecy, like the ancient prophets that walked into the court of the kings in sackcloth and ashes and warned ancient Babylon that if they were uh, not repentant immediately, that their kingdom will be taken, uh, just like the ancient prophet Jeremiah walking into the court. And, of course, the false prophet Hananiah broke off his yoke, which he came into a a object lesson of wearing a O yoke of wood. The yoke of wood was broken off by Hananiah, and then he came back into the court uh, with not only a garment with a dirty, if you want to call it, apron around it or, or tie, but he came back with a yoke of iron, and he said, you shall not break off this yoke. And he prophesied that the king of Babylon, uh, which is like the ancient of Israel, would come in that, the, that they would destroy Israel and that the king would be taken captive as his family would be executed. Uh, we're in a similar place right now, and we have the political right uh, received very well your first book, but this second book is a much harder book. It's a book that doesn't say, look at those bad guys over there, like the first book, and look how bad the liberal left is, and this is why there's a difference. It's a whole different uh, ball of wax when we point the fingers back at ourselves and what we need to do to stand up when it's when the standing counts. Uh, like the ancient prophet Habakkuk that had to say, you know, God's in it when things are rough. We just have to know what is God is talking to us about. Why does he put us in these situations like the desert with the with the three million plus uh, Israelis and Hebrews that were walking through the desert? And when the grumblers, by the way, happened, God only allowed uh, the two adults to survive <clears throat> uh, that went into the land and were positive and said, hey, we, we saw them. We were as grasshoppers. Uh, to these giants, and uh, Joshua and Caleb. And we have to understand that we're at a similar time here. America is the last republic in current world history. The first republic was Israel. There are no other republics on earth, although they may call themselves the Republic of Iran or whatever it is. There's no such thing as as a government where the individual, number one, gets his right not from government ever, but from the creator God, that is not a god of Mecca and Medina in Islam. It is not a god who lived in a round of star called Kolob. It is not a god who is uh, can be reached on the top of the mountains in the Himalayas. It is not a god that is in my belly button if I'm on all migrant altering drugs or dimethyltryptamine. It is a god that created the vastness of the universe where 460 quadrillion galaxies are tiny speck in the in the eye of the creator who is transcendent beyond all time and space and all dimensions. And a God so awesome, he can care about every hair in our head and even the the intentions of our thoughts. So nothing's hidden from him. And so when we are willing to listen, even in the death of our horrible circumstances, we're dying of cancer, we've had financial problems, our spouse or our children have committed suicide, what is God saying to us to stand up in those times of trial? What is he saying to America right now that we have Obama on the one hand, who is a Marxist, Leninist, Satanist, bisexual, drug-addicted maniac. And then we have Romney, I call Flip Hananiah Romney, who is a Mormon, who is a high-level Mason, who has to do his temple recommends before someone that play acts Satan, says man must fall knowing both good and evil, in front of someone who says that he believes that our Creator God, who is descended to earth and incarnated, was a brother of Lucifer. And that's who we want to elect as a Christian, right? Let me tell you, people out there, you know, we read the scroll, which the Lord has given me many years ago, 24 years ago, and I read 13 years ago when I traveled around the Prophecy Club. The first chapter of the scroll is a prophecy against America. And I'm going to let you kind of talk about your book now, but I'm going to read a tiny portion of this prophecy during this hour because we need a wake-up call. We need people to grab your book. We need to get not only into their eyes, but their souls. We need to get into the soles of their feet, too, to say, I'm not walking into that voting box to vote for option A, to be eaten by the tiger, or option B, to be mauled by the bear. Absolutely. Your turn. Well, Dr. Bill, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Now, I will just say that, you know, listening to your opening there, I just thought back to 2007 when I was emceeing the Conservative Political Action Conference and introducing all the political candidates, John McCain and Ron Paul and... Like Sam Brownback, Mitt Romney at the time. And I remember thinking to myself, because I was on the radio in Boston, 
a lot of what these guys are talking about, you know, I used to be a Republican cheerleader, essentially a Republican pom-pom boy, you know, like some of the guys on Fox News and the uh, so-called conservative radio uh, that we have. And um, essentially, my worldview, Dr. Bill, was the more Republicans we elect, the better off America will be. And that's the answer of all of our problems. But by the grace of God, he removed the veil and he made me see, he, he led me to the understanding that there was a much more deep, profound, spiritual, and moral problem in this country. And it wasn't economic. That the, our economic circumstances were, 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 were merely uh, a symptom of the underlying spiritual problem. And so, as you mentioned, I wrote this book, Conservative Comebacks to Liberal Lies, which is still selling like hotcakes, by the way, and refutes all of the most common claims of the left, essentially from A to Z. Um, and, boy, that was, everybody loved it. Dr. Bill, Thomas Sowell, and Walter Williams, the Limbaugh brothers, Glenn Beck, he holds it up regularly on his show and says everybody's got to buy this book. She answered all of our problems. What I realized is that as important as refuting the lies of the left are, that, that, that the left, Obama, Pelosi, Reid, everybody on the liberal left, they're, a, they're, they're merely symptomatic of the moral, spiritual breakdown in our country. And that God is judging the church right now. And that we, by being focused on Obama and how evil Obama and the liberals are, we're actually distracting and diverting our own attention from the very root of the problem. And what I realized, and my co-author Steve Bates realized, is that, hey, it's time to get off the Republican Kool-Aid. It's time to grow up, put on our big boy pants as Christians first, and realize that God is dealing with something very, very profound in our country, which we both believe to be a backslidden church. And I'm not saying that every Christian is bad, or that every church, uh, there are some good pastors out there and some good God-fearing, Bible-believing churches, congregations out there, but by and large, by and large, we both wrote this book as a wake-up call. We interviewed 13 of the, of the top Christian and conservative right leaders in the country, Dr. Bill, over a three-year period of time, and we asked them this question. We said, we are two late 30-year-old young punks, and we want to know, where did the right go wrong? Why is our society so radically to the left in virtually all, every realm of society? I'll, I'll uh, tell you what, I would, I would just summarize it, and I think you already get it in yeah. your book, which is why, why your book is so important, okay, is this. It's a Hebrew word called Shema. Now, yes. the Shin, which is the way the hands are held up, and you see Spock do it, the sign of Spock, because he was, apparently Spock is in the line of Cohen's, believe it or not. Okay, uh, my Ooh. family, my mother's side, were in the line of Cohen's. Okay, and when you say the prayer, the actual Mount Moriah on which the temple was placed, if you look at it from space from Google, you actually see it looks like the letter Shin. Now, the reason why this is important is what God looks at is if you haven't followed through with actions when you've heard, he acts as if you haven't heard. In other words, it's it's not a it's not it's a two part verb. In other words, to shema means hear and do. And if the pastors have wonderful meetings, wonderful words, but yet their people will vote, for example, for either Obama, because I've talked to many Christians who have later come to me and said I had to repent this and actually call and tell you or email that I voted for Obama. I said, do you vote for Obama when you knew he believed in infanticide and abortion, et cetera? How can you? Oh, we couldn't have Bush again. I said, are you kidding me? And then on the other hand, mm -hmm. we have people who know that how many millions of Americans in the future will become Mormons and become temple Mormons and do a ceremony in front of someone to play acts of Satan? And how many will, <clears throat> will be sealed for time and eternity under a satanic cult? How many? How many will Shema, not just speak, and they may say nice sounding words, but will they do? Will they do? Well, God only looks on the actions. If you don't hear and do, you haven't heard. Welcome back and, uh, how can they get a hold of your book, and how, this is so important, how can they get it? Yeah, so the book, 
uh, is called We Won't Get Fooled Again, Where the Christian Right Went Wrong and How to Make America Right Again. If you can go to the website at Won't Get Fooled dot com and you got to be prepared this is going to be this is going to take away a lot of your idols for example there are there's a cha- sample chapter dr Lagle, uh or deagle excuse me um with uh, uh ann coulter and myself and we used to be friends and we used to be email pals and i used to interview her on my radio show in boston and in los angeles and this will give your your listeners who think that, yeah, this is a right-wing diva, you know, arch-right-winger, this is going to give you a true glimpse of exactly what Ann Coulter believes. But, and that's what we've done with this book, uh, Dr. Dago, is we have we're, we're really torn down a lot of the golden calves, a lot of the idols, because we have gotten a glimpse, Steve Dace and I, inside the quote-unquote conservative movement. And, and we've, what we've realized is that a lot of people, a lot of these leaders and organizations and media pundits who we think are giving us a straight skinny and are quote-unquote you know, moral and social conservatives are really not. And it's about time people start understanding that we have been deceived by a lot of these folks in uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. Uh, it, it, you know, uh, organizations like the Family Research Council and Focus on the Family and others who have been propping up people like John McCain and Mitt Romney and others and have d- diverting us well, from is, the is, 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 spiritual fo- issues of our day. Now, now, now Focus on the Family, um, you're saying they're p- propping up uh, Mitt Romney? Well, in the past, uh, you know, Focus on the Family is guilty of a couple of things. Number one, Mm-hmm. With the five, five years that Mitt Romney has been running for president, uh, Dr. Bill, uh, Focus on the Family has never once shared with any of their donors, any of their listeners, any of their email base, Mitt Romney's fully documented record. And for any of your listeners that may not have heard us discuss this on your show before, they can go to my website at gregjackson.com, dot com, And on the homepage is Mitt Romney's fully documented record. And they will see that this guy is the most radically left-wing governor in the history of the republic. From right. instituting homosexual marriage, $50 abortions, uh, socialist health care, shutting down, uh, you know, uh, Catholic charity, so on and so forth. And the problem is, is that James Dobson, Tom Minery, all the powers that be, Jim Daly, Focus on the Family, misled millions of their, of their donors and listeners uh, in the 2008 election are doing so now by, of by omitting... Yeah. Omitting yeah. Romney's record. Why? Because they get a lot of Mormon money, a lot of Mormon donations. And this is one of the core messages of our book. Where did the right go wrong? Why do 85% of Americans claim to be Christian, yet we live in a pagan society that is run by pagans? Uh, the answer is simple. For the most part, we compromise God's word when it's inconvenient for us, when it gets in the way of making an all, the almighty buck. And the bottom line is that we... Uh, will sell our souls to get a seat at the Republican table if it means getting a little strippy scrap from the GOP. We put political pragmatism and politics ahead of principle. And when you do that, especially when you're compromising God's word, it reaps, when you, when you reap compromise, you sow, uh, sow compromise, you reap it. We saw it in 2008 with McCain, and it's going to be even worse. And I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it's the truth. If you thought that McCain got beaten badly, wait, you ain't seen nothing yet till November, because you don't win without your base. And we're going to learn it the hard way. But if your listeners want to know where we have gone wrong, you get to the nitty-gritty of it, the heart of the matter, because that's what our book is about. We won't get fooled again. We want to get to the heart of the matter. And the fact of the matter is, Dr. Daigle, that until Christians... Until we corporately, individually look at ourselves in the mirror and realize that we, and I'm just as guilty of this, have been following false shepherds, false leaders. We've been lying to ourselves, wanting to believe the lie. We've got to elect more Republicans. Republicans are better than Democrats, and they're the answer to America's problems. Until we get over that and realize that the problems are spiritual, and when you don't have churches... Even even a small percentage of churches, Dr. Daigle, on any given Sunday, talking about the greatest moral issue of our day, the abortion holocaust, 60, upwards of 60 million babies, not including abortifacients, that 
4,000 babies that have their arms and legs ripped apart and torn and thrown in garbage receptacles every day in this country. And I had a pastor last week tell me that he's an apostle and I'm a prophet and we have different callings. That's why he's not going to have people sign petitions to support the Colorado personhood, to get through the Colorado personhood amendment on the ballot. Uh, and that's why he doesn't preach against abortion. we got real major league problems inside the Church of Laodicea in America. And it's exactly. about time that we wake up. Well, well, yeah, I want to highlight some of the things you said down there. I totally agree. We have the Church of the Prophets that you can go to in Colorado Springs where you can get a stamp that says you're a prophet. You don't get to be a prophet because you want to be one. Only an idiot would apply for the job, to be honest with you. Number two. Uh, you have to realize, that. yeah, now, number two, Focus on the Family is a Masonic organization. I took care of, actually, their employees and know that fully. They got a huge mm -hmm. grant from the largest Masonic organization in the western United States. So what happens is the church is rife with high-level Masons from uh, various, we call church networks like uh, TBN to uh, many uh, so-called leaders that are involved with all kinds of chicanery. And a lot of them will uh, personally announce that they are, quote, I'm an apostle, a prophet. I said, well, you know what? I'd like to see your creds. And you know what your creds are? Is again, the hurt word, Shema. Have you healed anybody supernaturally? Have you followed the word of Most High God? Have you spoken out in the capitals of the of the uh, buildings and the law courts, etc., against these abominations? And again, uh, I just want to read a couple of verses of chapter 1 of the scroll, which is a prophecy against America. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of America, which I have brought up from all the lands of persecution. Your nation I have set high above all nations as a light to truth and justice. For you feared my words. You were children of light and not of darkness. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. This is right out of mm -hmm. Habakkuk, right out of Jeremiah. Today I blow a trumpet for my people. Come out of her daughter of Babylon. She has made the whole earth drunk with the wine of her outrageous prophets of every stock option, dividend, and contract. You who rob the poor and crush the weak and sell the insider information while you convince the foolish enough to believe your lies and buy until their wealth is dust and sand that has fallen between their fingers. The evil one stalks a prey, and I reveal to my servant the prophets. In other words, you have to reveal. You're doing a word right now of revealing the evil to the public to give them a final recompense of, of redemption. Those who hear these words and who heed and obey will escape through the days of trouble as my people did to the land of Goshen when I sent the plagues upon the land of Egypt. Proclaim in the streets of Islam and Russia that America knows not how to do right. I send among you Gorbachev who tells, who tells another gospel and you write the earth charter as your new commandments. He bears a green cross and defiles the cross I bore for you, my people. Because you have forsaken your first love, America, I will send you global eco-communism and Islamic terror. And we have, of course... An Islamic Arab president in the White House right now. And if we continue to, to try to elect a Mormon without his base, we will have another term of Obama guaranteed. We'll come back, I'll read some more of this uh, chapter, and it'll fit perfectly with your book. Again, won'tgetfool.com, gregjackson.com, back in a moment. And you can go over to Clay and Iron and read more of this uh, scroll. I'll be putting up much more information and videos. And Clay and Iron, you're going to see a lot of uh, new video uh, on both websites, all the audio clips from all of the uh, the shows, actually cross-indexed by all of the fantastic guests we have, like Greg Jackson and Steve Dace. But I want to read on just a little further down in this uh, chapter, and it fits perfectly with your book. You, O oh America, have not only shed the blood of my littlest ones, but have denied care to your poor and elderly. You have forced the heathen nations of the earth to kill their little ones, and I see their blood upon your hands. It cries to me from many lands for justice. How long, O oh Lord, will our sisters and brothers die in their mother's wombs at the hands of America and its multinational corporations? Have I not declared that you must not make any of your children to walk through the fire for Moloch or Baal, but you did? When your president vetoed the abomination of murder by suction at Beerus, were you, O oh church, where was your outrage? 
Where were your lawyers and physicians that call themselves by my name? My judgment starts upon my house that sees and rebukes the demonic horde, but does not speak in the houses of law and in the capitals of your cities against this outrage. Prophesy not in my name if you do not first stand in the breach for the least of your brothers and sisters here and in many lands. I do not need your permission to rebuke the hordes of Satan. I desire only that you love and serve only me and not buildings and programs and warfare that sets you arrogantly at my right hand. For I will hold you, O church, that calls yourself by my name in your blood guilt, O quiet warriors. I will forever silence you unless you turn and repent for not speaking against these murders. That's where we're at. Now, let me tell you, and I have... Probably either live or on rebroadcast, millions of listeners a day. I have not been invited to one church since 2000. That was the Church of Living Waters outside St. Paul, Minnesota. And uh, let me tell you, I'm sure that I would not be reinvited because I come not as nice Dr. Deagle, I come as Prophet Dr. Deagle. And I'm not one of these prophets that was anointed by some crazy ministry in Colorado Springs or elsewhere that went to the School of the Prophets. I was dragged. From the from literally the grave and sent back here to earth to actually say to people a final word to say if you don't repent before the Most High you won't just have starvation you won't just have devastation you'll have death on the level of omnicide and America will have its double portion we're already receiving what I call the final in a sense Obama is a grace to us it's a wake up call it's saying oh my gosh and then the strike of Mitt Romney is another grace saying God is speaking to us, yet we are not, our ears are blocked and our eyes are coated with scales, so we don't want to. And your book is like a, a bomb, a salve, like it says in the Bible in the Old Testament, to take off the scales off their eye and the plugs out of their ears so they can actually hear. What is God saying? He's saying, stand up. Now, what happened with prophecy uh, with the uh, uh, focus on the family is in 1999, I traveled around the country and I spoke and said on uh, the folks uh, on the uh, Prophecy Club Radio, and in uh, 42 cities in Israel, so we had a huge audience, and uh, I n- noted that I was the not only the doctor for Focus for several years, occupational doctor, but I also um, took care of their accounting department, found out they were fully, uh, completely Masonic, and that uh, I announced that I was also the one preparing the briefing documents for the pro-life uh, movement coming from Focus on the Family, their whole team, in fire, entire briefing documents, I prepared many hours of my work going to Beijing, China, against Hillary Clinton, who was then the uh, special delegate of the Beijing Population Control Summit. And I said uh, to them in advance, in fact, uh, that when they went to Beijing, the Muslim countries would walk out, but the Christians would not. They would capitulate and try to politic the issue rather than dealing with the bullet with the horror. And, of course, the latest issue of America, you know, backstepping over the issue of this dissident blind, a self-trained lawyer in China that his family were threatened because he has two children and he's one of the most pro-life Chinese lawyers trying to fight against the one-child policy, which, by the way, Hillary Clinton, Hitlery, Rodham, uh, if you want to call it Lilith Clinton, uh, the literally the wife of Satan, if you want to call it, is uh, the architect back then. It was the architect of the first attempt to put in national eugenic care. Uh, that's what we should call it, eugenic care. And uh, folks in the family sent me a legal letter. They threatened to sue me for millions and take everything I had. And you know what God said to me in prayer? And I tra- prayed with my wife. I said, I wrote a letter back, said, please, by all means, sue me. You'll have cameras. I'll have book contracts. We're going to have a real good, ugly fight because I'm going to expose the truth about Focus. And if you want to do it again right now, Focus, I have a bigger audience. And I have a better attitude because I serve the Most High God. And when you support yeah. people like Mitt Romney... You're fighting against the prophet of the Most High, and the most vile sin on earth, believe it or not, is not mass murder. It's the sin of Cain. It's slaying the prophet, as they say, between the brazen labor and the Holy of Holies. It's literally cutting off your relationship with God because of jealousy, angry, and vile evil. And don't profess to be good. For example, when I said that uh, people like uh, Billy Graham was a high-level Mason, one of the Christian ministries, it's a new day, who are friends of us for years, say, oh, we can't have you on radio and television and sell your books. This is back in 1999. Oh, we can't do that. We'll offend so many people. Guess what? If we aren't as Christians, if we aren't as leaders, which we are, if we aren't telling the truth, what are we? If we are not salt and light, what are we? Amen. What are we? What are we? Are we to 
soft soap it so that if we just get enough Republicans, I call it the snake party. The snake party, the Republican side or conservative side pushes against the liberal side and the snake moves forward. We don't want mm. that. If we have the alternative of two parties that are what I call hell-bent, literally, and so millions of, if Obama did get defeated, uh, we would have Mitt Romney and millions of Americans would say, oh, it's perfectly good to become a Mormon. Not. Not. I bought my first practice from the Mormon prophet's daughter's husband's brother. They had no idea what Mormonism was about. I was a ex-Roman Catholic. And let me tell you, in 1980, that's 32 years ago, I had a wake-up call because I had lost about 6,000 Mormons, but I still had around, mm -hmm. you know, 16, 17,000 Mormons. That's a lot of Mormons. And I took care of Temple Mormons that were involved in everything, including calling me at late at night because they were freaked out because they had been involved in human ritual sacrifice, that they were involved in demonic things going on and all kinds of manifestations right out of the pit of hell. And people need to know what Mormonism is. It's one of the most vile cults on the earth. It's sneakier than Islam, and it purports to be Christian, but it's like a UFO cult on steroids, and it's really dangerous. Mm. Now, you know, if that, that offends people out there, I want you to repent, repent realize that you don't need to go to Kolob to get your own planet and all this stuff. As soon as you turn and repent toward God, you're a son or daughter of God. You don't even need to do anything. All God wants you to do is positionally say, you know what, God, you're Lord. And I'm going to do what I have to do, even if it offends my family, my friends, even if they spit on me. Because you and I now, you are now a member of the good club of Christian leaders called the Club of Spittle. We are men of spittle. Because right. those who will not believe us, and the worst is not the enemy out there like Obama, the worst are those who call themselves the church that are not. That are not. Amen. Jesus, Jesus Dr. <clears throat> Bill, said, I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father but through me right it's only through jesus and 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 he is the lord of lord and the king of kings you know his word says the lord nullifies the counsel of the nations he frustrates the plans of the peoples that's taken from psalm 33 which is actually the last portion of our book we quote from psalm 33 because that's where we're at everybody yeah. thinks they're, they're you know they have all these plans well we just got to get rid of obama then everything will be peachy keen it'll be leave it to beaver again here in america but you know uh, we'll get no. this guy he's, he's not perfect but he's better than obama let me get let me get, get give you some news the lord nullifies the council of the nations he frustrates the plans of the people the council of the lord stands forever and let me just tell you something if you think with your earthly pea brain because that's all we have compared to God's uh, omniscient, omnipotent mind. But if we think with our little pea brains that we're going to do this on our own and to get a Republican in office, that we think we'll do less damage than Obama, we are making an enormous mistake. And, right. so, and, and by the way, we have to, uh, while, I'm, while I'm here with my titanium, uh, you know, uh, claws on to kind of slash against these uh, false uh, so-called leaders, we need to deal with the issue of Ron Paul. Now, Ron Paul has yes. done tremendous things on the financial issue to bring back and repatriate the actual cash here. But he's a social liberal. People need to understand that states don't have yes. rights over the issue of abortion, which he supports. That he says he's pro-life, but again, Shema, here and do. I don't care if he's been an obstetrician. I witnessed against doctors that think they know better, and they know that I'm a doctor, so they can't fool me. Okay? back with uh, Greg Jackson. Again, the website is gregjackson.com, won'tgetfooled.com. I want to read the last two uh, uh, paragraphs of this first scroll. You can go to Clay and Iron and read the first four, cha four uh, chapters of the scroll. It'll take you about a half an hour to read them. There's quite a bit more coming, believe it or not. There's 12 chapters in total. We, few nations afar off, woe, woe, woe. Great was the daughter of Babylon. By her sons of the Illuminated One and by their stock market, many nations and peoples have become rich. In one day has come destruction to the cities of glass and steel like mountains of light. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Go forth once more unto a hard and arrogant people, a righteous people, full of purpose and plans with my word on their lips, but a curse in their hearts. 
Turn you sheep from the pathway that leads to destruction and become my people again, and I will turn to you and heal your land and set my tent over you, and you will be my bride. But if you do not soon turn, then in the day of my wrath I will set my face against you, and you will become only a whisper in the darkness, O America. That's what your book is saying. Amen. Yeah, we're, we're, it, it, you know the the Bible says in in verse uh, excuse me in Psalm thirty two, Doctor Bill, many are the sorrows of the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, loving kindness shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones, and shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. The answer to America's problems is turning back in, individually and corporately and repenting of our sins. And, and, and recognizing the fact that only the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, holds the key for any healing that needs to take place in this country, any, any, anything that we hope and yearn for in terms of goodness and righteousness can only be found in Him. And unless we are willing to face that, that, that stark realization in truth and turn away from our idols, the Republican Party versus the Democrat Party, it's a false choice, Dr. Bill, like the Sadducees versus the Pharisees. It's what Satan wants us to be. You know, it's the Republicans and the Democans. Until we can break free of the matrix and understand that we have nothing to fear in Obama, the, that if yeah. we would just turn to the Most High God, and obey him and reject all of the evil, whether it's got an R near his name or a D near his name, God, I believe, would reward that. He would give us the strategy, he would give us the leaders, and ultimately the victory, even if it's, even if it's not political victory in the way we envision victory to be. Exactly. But, uh, and, but the we, lose, yeah. and, and the way we have, have structured it, we've literally literally given ourselves over to evil. We're now getting our, our intellectual property exported to a satanic nation of China where they persecute a man because he's a blind, self-trained lawyer trying to stop one-child policy killing millions of Chinese babies. Now, my sister is married to a Chinese man who has wonderful children, okay? And he was born in Shenzhen, okay? And what happened is when they escaped there, because their, their family were quite wealthy, were bankers in Shenzhen outside of Hong Kong, they killed most of them by shooting them in the back of the head during the revolution. When she traveled through China, because she was, speaks uh, five different dialects of Chinese, uh, including the remote ones, more than her Asian or Chinese family that she married, she worked as a journalist for the Hong Kong Daily News. And what she said to me was, in many of the country, parts of the country, what they would do is they, female babies, they'd stuff their mouths if they were born with rice until they choked to death and died. And, of course, in the country and other areas, they would hide the girls so they would never be registered, especially out in the country. So there's millions of unregistered girls that exist. Now in China, if you're female, you get persecuted because there's so few females that there's so much persecution because of the uh, 36, they estimate, 36 to 74 million males that could never get a bride unless they buy one from uh, somewhere else, some other country like Indonesia or Palestine or wherever. It's obscene. Mm. And the financial pressures going on in the country are ridiculous. China has followed the one child policy because it's the United Nations based in New York City, followed by the Rothschilds and the globalists. Uh, and most people don't realize that the Mormon church is totally in the back pocket of the Mossad and the Rothschilds. Since the collapse of the sugarcane industry in Hawaii in the 1940s and the takeover by the Rothschilds, the high-level Masons within the Mormon Church and the high-level Masons and the Rothschilds are satanic bakers running the dividend game and the financial game. And what they want to do is systematically collapse Europe, which they've set up, systematically collapse America by proxy, destroy the middle class, which is their game, and then eventually give us a biometric currency and say, look, isn't it nice you can have a pottage and we're going to make sure you feel safe in your little electronic cage with your smart meter and your biometrics and your smart highways and your tracker chip on your vehicle so we know where you are and we can even track if you go over the speed limit. And people say, Dr. Deagle, you're just exaggerating. You're having a bad day. No, I'm not. All, I only tell you 10%. I tell you 10% of what I think you can handle. I do mm -hmm. not tell you the other 90% because I show mercy. Now, old there, if you think you can disagree, I am fully ready, and I'll turn the right side of my face to spittle. But you know what it says in the Bible? Turn the other cheek. The cheek that you strike of a child is one cheek. But if you strike the other cheek, it means we're going to have a fight to the death. And it's not that I fight with you, but you fight with 
the witness who comes before you from the Most High God, you fight with God. And that's not a good fight to start because God, like when he brought judgment on Babylon, he didn't say, it's not going to be nice, Habakkuk or Jeremiah. I'm going to send the enemy to actually haul away your and your kings and execute all the sons and daughters. I'm going to execute most of your people. Your lands are going to be barren, and you're going to even strip the palace and the Holy of Holies and all the golden implements that were in the sacred area of the Holy of Holies, and they're going to be put as baubles in this pagan temple because you people are so gone, and that means America, are so gone that you'll even consider as Christian leaders to put in a Mormon as a president. You'll even consider as Christians putting Obama as a president in the last election and reconsidering doing it again, even though you know in your heart that babies will be pulled apart by suction curatage or their limbs, their brain sucked out to the back of their head after most of the body is delivered, or they'll be terminated by drugs or some other abortifacient, but it's not a problem. It's, nobody sees it. It's behind medical walls, so don't worry. It's all a medical procedure. Lies. More lies. The amount of persecution that I went under personally, about trying to keep my little daughter from being aborted 20 years ago, I had to threaten the geneticists and the other people to the point where if they kept bothering me, I said, if you bother me one more time, 6.30 in the morning or 11, you'll never bother anybody else again. And they realized, ooh, Dr. Deagle is serious. Now, the problem is most people don't have my backbone, so they're going to succumb to it, especially if they're... You know, now if they're novices, they're young people, they're people in distress, yes, especially distressed females, and they say, "Oh, don't worry, the saline abortion won't hurt much." No, no. When they plunge a giant needle through your abdominal sac into the amniotic sac, and the fetus is writhing and jumping and screaming as its skin is being burned off and it's turning blue. Oh no, and it's suffocating in utero. Oh, it doesn't hurt at all. It doesn't hurt the politician. It doesn't hurt the doctor in his wallet. It doesn't hurt. But that mother when she becomes sterile or she ruptures her uterus later on because she's had a, an abortion or she gets Asherman syndrome and can't get pregnant, oh, yes, it does uh, hurt her. And when she ends up with a crisis of maybe her only child dies in an accident or develops cancer, there's a recall phenomenon where that woman may commit suicide. And you may not connect A and B, but guess what there is? Or the relationship for their husband or her boyfriend never holds together because they've had an mm -hmm. abortion. Don't say it's okay, church. The judgment starts on the church, and if the church thinks it's okay to elect either one of these fools or the alternative, which is Ron Paul, we got it wrong. We don't have any alternatives. That's why 2012 is not the Mayan calendar. It's America. And America, if you don't wise up, there won't be an America. It'll be like the Hunger Games. And if you think, oh, Dr. Digg, I said, if you're lucky, if there's enough people left, there'll be a Hunger Games. I think the judgment's going to be so devastating on the earth as it says man will be as rare as the gold of Orphir. That's what it says in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. The gold of, A wedge of a gold of Orphir is so rare that no one's ever seen it, which means man will be like as rare as a, as a, a special type of, uh, of truffle caught in a specific hundred square yards of a specific forest in France. If man does yeah. not repent. Dr. Dr. Daigle, I, just to add to that, you know, you're talking about abortion in general, which I believe is the great, you know, it's like slavery in the 1860s. I mean, for people not to recognize this is the greatest moral issue of our day, code blue, moral... Yeah. And, and on top of that, eugenicide, we got Obamacare where they're even debating in the Supreme Court that they're not yeah. going to give us a judgment until next month. If they don't mm -hmm. strike down Obamacare, which is the center point of his eugenicide program, and if we don't come up with a competent policy, ancient Israel, every doctor, it was a Kohenic priest, there was no such thing as people having to pay when you're sick. It was part of the tithe. The tithe didn't go to the church. It went to provide all the things from public defense uh, to everything else, and the free will offerings of the people were for the temple. There was never a tithe to the church. It was free will. So even if God said give 90% because you're really wealthy, you weren't withheld by 10%. God said, hey, sucker, you got 100 million, you can do with 90 million going to the church <clears throat> or a specific function. But we don't have that kind of relationship with God in the church now. That's why we're under judgment. Again, gregjackson.com, won'tgetfooled.com. If you're offended today, good. Good.